Welcome back. So last week, I put a post out on my social media uh, proposing to any rider that wanted to improve their riding on track to send me their footage and data so I could review it, have a look at it, compare it with my stuff and try and give a few guidelines. So Mike was the first guy to send me his, uh, his uh, data and footage. Um, he's been riding on track for about a year. He's riding a 600 bike and this was from Donington. So if like Mike, you would like me to have a look at your track the footage, send me your video file via WeTransfer. My email address is sylvainguintoli at btinternet.com. So basically in this video, I'm going to show you some clips of it because it's a, it's a fair minute, 30 minute um, report, so it's quite long. Um, first of all though, let's hear a few words from Mike. First off, just like to say thanks to you for going through the video and, and taking the time to go through my footage. In terms of rider training, I've had on track training and now video training and by far the video training has been more helpful um, for you being able to stop and pause and go through the data corner by corner and hear where I'm revving the bike and, where, and then look at the data and see where I'm braking is much more helpful than on, rider tra uh, on track training. The on track training was was helpful. I went out to Cartagena and, and had some on track training and it was good but obviously the, the rider is following you can only concentrate so much on what you're doing whereas the video stuff you've been able to go through it point by point I've found really helpful and I'd advise anyone to, to jump on board to any video training that's available. So the full report that I sent Mike was over 30 minutes long so we're not going to have a look at all that today but I'm going to show you a few clips so let's get started. So on the left here you got uh, Mike's uh, video file and on the right here this is uh, one of my laps and what we've got on this other screen is we've got so we've got the Donington map I've divided the track in uh, sectors we've got some lap times which these are my lap times uh, so some different lap times 52 48 45 I've recorded different lap times at different pace so Mike is riding a 600 so in the straight as you can see uh, here and in the back straight it's quite a big difference like the, the, the Suzuki is the thousand is quite fast uh, in all the accelerations but the riding style is different as well so that'll be interesting so first of all we're going to have a look at the video and the sound to try and understand how we can make Mike faster this first section is to analyze Goddard's corner which is the last turn in Donington it's a left turn hairpin that goes into the finish straight or the start straight Right, so first thing is, I can see is in the braking zone here, you want to go, you want to be more to the right and you also want to go a little bit further, you like tipped him a bit earlier. And then what's happened is you mix, you missed here the apex. So really you want to be here onto the, like near the white line. If you look at my line there, there you go. You see, I'm on I'm on that that different tarmac, like right in the inside of the curb, ready to pick the bike up and get a good corner exit. You just stay wide, look, too wide. So you spend a lot of time on the leaning of the tire here, and you're not able to accelerate properly. So try and have a bit of a tighter line here. Now let's take a look at turn one, red gate, and the following corner, Hollywood corner. Red gate. There you go. So as soon as I pick up the throttle, right in the inside. Late apex, but right in the inside. Then on to Hollywood, short shift, and keep a constant speed with low RPM, heating the apex. So you stay in second. You could be a bit more inside here, and the bike is revving a lot. Yeah, so here you, you don't want to stay in second. Uh, red gate is second gear, um, but Hollywood, Hollywood is normally fourth. So at least for a first step, try and go to third. So that will lower your RPM. The bike will be like more inviting to carry corner speed. Hollywood and Craners is a corner speed corners. So you want to try and carry corner speed. So try to go to third to start with, but ideally you want to go to fourth. Um, but try third first. You can't like, you know, go flat out straight away. So try third and carry more corner speed. Stay in the inside as well. You see the those two apexes here. So the first the first two curbs, you want to be close to it. So the first one was not bad. The second one, you're drifting away a bit. You want to be like a meter more inside it. Trainers was not bad. 
the line is okay there. Last clip of the video analysis, Melbourne Airpin. So this is a very difficult corner to get right, but lots of good advice for Mike and loads to look forward to for his next track there. Now going in, you see how much space I've got compared to you. That's because I'm going to try and drive harder on the, on the exit, get a late apex and drive harder. If you go in too early, your corner speed might be all right, but you're not going to exceed the corner very well. So your entry speed is all right, and well, especially the mid corner speed, but then the acceleration of little airpins like that is going to be compromised. So see, I go in, I don't, I don't hit the first apex. My apex is here, like late. There you go. And let's have a look. Yeah, you're hugging the curb more and you're actually quite wide here. You, you should be more that way and then cutting to the apex here. I think you're going to go that way. Yeah, so you go a bit, bit wide. So what's really important here for you to try and do is don't go in the corner too fast. Try and really think of like getting a late apex into Melbourne and try and then not to not spend time on the leaning of the tire. You see the position I'm in now. I'm able to up the bike, put the bike more upright and accelerate harder where you're just still turning on the exit and you're going to be on the side of the tire, which is more risky as well for high sides. And also like mechanically, you can't put as many as much grip on it. Now let's take a look at the data compare page so we can push the analysis further. Okay, let's have a look at the data now. So these were the two laps that we were just looking at. So a 152 for me and a 205 for you. It's quite a big difference in lap time. And I'm going to explain to you why. So we can see that here. So first, the straight line speed. I mean, it's this is the start of the lap. So that's your image and that's my video. Uh, so we can compare the, the position. So um, the first thing is obviously the, the jet exercise is a thousand cc so it's faster so we get this at the same at the time you break i'm doing 221 and you're doing uh, that's kilometer per hour 195 so that's that's completely normal now you so you break a bit earlier so the entry phase i'm like entering faster on the video your line you're a bit a bit too much in the inside of the corner so try and use a little bit more space to the left then the corner speed is actually really good for you um your so if we if we look at the sector for example so this is your first sector this is my first sector so see the corner speed is very similar corner speed 71 k an hour so exactly the same corner speed but you're wider and you're not able to go back to the apex where i am already so here you're going to spend some time on the leaning of the tire and not get a really good exit especially after look, you can see that here for example um, so I'm, i am breaking harder than you there is 0.8 G for you and 1 G for me. Um, and it's it's constant all the way down when we put the, the, like the, the bike on the leaning a bit as well. It's more confidence for me there with the front. Um, but your corner speed is very good, very good. So don't try and go faster in the corners. You're already very fast. Um, the exit then, I'm accelerating for longer. You see here, I'm able to nail it where you're just rolling off basically because your, your G-force goes down. So that means you're not accelerating anymore. I am now showing Mike a really fast lap to compare the datas. But actually, we found out that in some places, he's faster than me. And I'm going to show you a 38. So you can see that, okay, well, this, you can't really compare this. It's too much of a big difference. And I'm, I'm just going in the corners real hard, like, like really, really hard. Um, but if you look again, look, this is great. Um, if you look at your last, my, no, um, I'll put your last sector and my last sector. And bear in mind, that's, that's my fastest split of this series of laps. It's a 38, so it's a fast lap, this. And yours is a 205, so it is a big difference. But look, this is the last sector. So corner speed in Melbourne Airpin, I am doing 39 at the lowest point. You're doing... 45 so you're 5k 6k is faster than me and then in goddard at the apex i'm doing 38 and you're doing sorry 48 and you're doing 50 so 
<laughs> see this is this is this is great you just need to slow you need to slow your middle middle speed down you'll get better break 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 harder downshift straight away break harder don't try to carry corner speed and then stay tight and pick up your bike like i mean reduce the leaning on the as soon as you pick up the throttle and then exit better you'll make huge progress with this right i hope that's um it's gonna help you a little bit and uh yeah let me know as soon as you get back on a on a on the track there let me know um how much progress you've made and uh hopefully we can uh, yeah we can see that you've gained some some second see you mate that's it for today so if like mike you would like me to have a look at your track day footage send me your video files on my email which is sylvainguintoli at btinternet.com send me that via we transfer because they're normally quite heavy so it's a lot easier that way if you have video uh, footage only, that's fine. I can get a lot of information from that and also give you some guidance already, like quite complete with that. If you have recorded your footage with a GoPro that has a GPS feature, that's even better because I can compare the data as well, just like Mike's. I'll see you soon, guys. Being able to go through the footage, how he has, and, and it's really given me some good points to work on at the next track day. So fully advise everyone to, to get on board and and give it a go. Cheers, Sylvan. So